third purpose of the, of the church. Amen. But uh, God changed my message, and I'm standing here uh, uh, tonight, and uh, we're going to go actually to Matthew 24 tonight, and I'm going to talk about the last day's church. Amen. The last day's church. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this opportunity tonight to preach. Father, to those that are here and those that are watching by YouTube and those that might be walking down this alley, Father, I pray tonight, Lord God, that you would anoint my lips, you would use me, God, to speak your word, Lord. Father, tonight, Holy Spirit, I ask for you to anoint me tonight and anoint every ear here, everyone watching this video tonight, God, that you would just speak to their hearts, God, and encourage them, Lord, and, 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 and uh, warn them, if you must, Lord, tonight. Father, Lord, that it's time to get our lives right with you, Lord God. And Father, we thank you for it tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Last day's church, amen. God just gave me some scriptures, and I just wrote them down, and I'll preach them as we go. Amen. Uh, Matthew 24, verse number 10 through 14, and I'll be reading out of the New Living Tra Translation. It says this, And many will turn away... And right before it said that, those of you who got your Bibles, it said something about you're going to be persecuted, you're going to be put in prison, and you'll even be murdered for the gospel's sake. And I thought, well, I'm not going to throw that in there because then they're going to not want to serve the Lord. No more. Hey, you, when we were in, when we, I don't know, when, when, but when I was in the gangs and stuff like that, we were we were persecuted for what we did because we did a lot of wrong. We were uh, shot at and and jumped and everything else, and we were willing to die for what we what we believed in. But then we get saved and things change and we become cowards and, right. and we don't want to serve the Lord because we might get hurt or slapped or put in jail. Could you imagine going to do some time for being a Christian? Hmm? Amen. Say amen so that people know you're here tonight because you're probably amen, you're preaching on an empty church. Yeah. Amen. But, uh, you know, uh, it said that they're, they're going to do this. Persecute us, put us in prison, and even kill us for Jesus' name. That's right. Amen. And it says this, And many will turn away from me, Jesus speaking, and betray and hate each other. And many false prophets or false preachers will appear and will deceive many people. These are preachers now. He says, sin will be rampant everywhere, including the church. And the love of many will grow cold. You know that that's one sign of the church? That's one sign that you're his disciple, is that you love one another as he loved you? And once your love starts growing cold for the church and for one another and for, for, for your pastors and for the body of Christ and for sinners... Man, what hope is there? There's no more hope. He said, and many, uh, uh, and the, and the, let me see. Many will grow cold, the love of many will grow cold. He says, but the one, but the one, mira, not the ones, <laughs> the one who endures to the end will be saved. That means that you might have to stand alone in your family. It, might, it means that maybe you're taking the chance that even though you commit 100% to the Lord, maybe some of your family won't get saved. Maybe they won't want to get saved. Maybe they love their sin too much and they won't leave that and walk away from it. And, and well, you know, that, you, know, you know what I mean? We, you, we, preachers don't preach on hell no more. They don't even want to mention that, that yeah. from the pulpit because they might offend somebody and they might not give in the offering or come back to their church. Yeah. Oh. But hell is real. Yes. Regardless, hell is real. Right. And it's full. Right. And, it's, and it's borders. I mean, there, it says that, hell, that the mouth of hell is never quenched. I mean, it wants more. Have you ever seen that one show? What's that one show that back in the day that was a, a, a petunia or, a, or a, 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 a plant? Yeah, what's the movie? Little Shop of Horrors. Little Shop of Horrors. Remember the guy had the plant that would eat meat? He gave us some meat. The person was eating people. And they didn't stop. He wanted to eat him, man. He was just out of control. 
And that's the way hell has gotten. It wants everybody. It wants every one of your family members. Yeah. It wants your mama. It wants your daddy. It wants your husband, your wife, your boyfriend, your girlfriend. It wants your children. It wants your neighbors. It wants your enemies, your best friends. Never quench. I mean, it wants everybody. Right. And you know that God wants you to? Yeah. That it's God's will that all should be saved, that all should come to repentance, that not one would be lost. It's His will that His house will be filled. He said in John 14, in my Father's house are many mansions or many rooms. You with me? And He said, I want, to, I want you to go there with me. You have your own luxury suite and penthouse. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. You with me? That's what I want. I don't want to go to hell. No. I won't go down there. There's weeping and gnashing of teeth and the fire never quenches. I mean, it's just torture for eternity. It never stops, never ends. You with me? Yeah. And, and, and he's talking about the one who endures to the end, the one who makes it all the way to the very end. And he said that one will be saved. Yeah. Yeah. So obviously what it means is that there's going to be some that begin a good race. But don't finish the race. You with me? So Jesus was a finisher. He finished the job that he started. How many of you got stuff at home? Crafts and a career and you started this and you had your own sewing business and you did this and that and it's all piled in a corner. Your weight set? <laughs> Come on, ladies. You got your little, your little dumbbells and three pounders or one pounders and your sweat outfit with the bandana. I told, I told my wife and Andrea, and I said, "Where you guys buy sweats? Pink and all look all nice and everything, but you don't go to the wife. I said, "What's up with all that stuff? But it's fashionable, they say, but, I don't know, but it's workout clothes. It's heavy duty." Uh, Sweat suits, but no sweat. <laughs> the suit. <laughs> <laughs> the one that endures to the very end of this life, of this battle, of this fight of faith, the one that endures to the end and doesn't give up when you get sick, doesn't give up yeah. when you're broke, doesn't give up when life throws you curveballs, when your family and friends and even church members come against you, yeah. you, you continue to go. Yeah. That's what I tell people. I say, you know why I'm the pastor of this church? Because I'm the only one that shows up every service. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. Somebody's got to be here every service. Yeah. Somebody's got to be here all the time for prayer. Wow. I wish I could pass. If I was the pastor, well, come every service, and maybe one day, who knows? Yeah. But until then, zip it, Corky. Wow. <laughs> and follow, vamos, let's walk, let's go. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> the one who endures, you know what endurance is? And endurance is that you don't quit, you don't give up. And I think when we looked it up the last time, it said that you're, 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 you don't give up, even in the face of adversity and trial and hardships and torture and all this different stuff you don't quit serving the lord you you might fall you might get you know what i mean and 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 but you don't quit you know how many times in my lifetime after serving the lord over 30 years that i'm like you i wanted to quit and give up just because i'm a pastor some of you think oh it's easy for him but you don't know what i go through no you don't know what we go through you really don't. I mean, I know you understand your problems and yeah. your little issues and the, just your little household, but could you imagine the, the, the task of the job of a pastor that's looking over a whole flock of people and not just himself? Right. You with me? Yeah. That, that at times you give your whole heart to your church. That's right. You with me? Yeah. And, 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 and sometimes you get the finger in return. Come on, somebody. Yeah, you with me? You try doing that. How hard is that when your kids do that to you? Yeah. Could you imagine people that you've brought off of heroin and drugs and you've, you've nursed them to health? Yep. People that you've given money to, you bought their baby's diapers, you put them in your own home. Yep. Now, we've had women in our house and men in our house and that slept within the room with our kids and everything else. You know what I mean? Not yeah. the girls and men, but you know what I mean? Girls with the girls and boys or men with the boys and you know what I mean and stuff and we've risked our our, our, our even safety of our own kids for the yeah. for, for to help somebody out yeah. right. 
You with me? And to, and to, and to you know, and never hear from them again. Or for them to come and say, oh yeah, them pastors took all my money. <laughs> huh? Yeah. Amen? So one lady came in our home one time, she, she had five kids, man. And we brought her in, she is homeless, she was an addict, she was all jacked up. And she came in our home and all she did when she, she, she took advantage of it, her kids took advantage of it, but when they were done and they left, they went out talking about things, even little things we had in our home. Oh yeah, she, she had some Dooney and Burke purses. She had this, she had, how do you know, were you in the closets or what? Yeah. You with me? I mean, you know, people, you, you forgot we helped you. Uh, we brought you out of, out of the, uh, you know, your do, your domestic violence and all this stuff, and to turn around and, and talk smack about us when you left, you know what? And it's it's a sad to say the lady's not alive no more. Right, she died, and all her five kids went to our uh, foster care and everything like that. You with me? And you know what I mean? And it's it's heavy duty, man, because this life that we live, you, you guys don't even understand. And even those of you that are out there, you need to pray for our church. The enemy has attacked this ministry hardcore. Yeah. Hardcore. I mean, even with the people that we have, even with the faithful. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. They haven't given up. They haven't quit. But they just... Yeah. I don't know how to say it. Yeah, right. Don't want to be here. Don't want to come. Yeah. Make excuses yeah. why they don't come, or, or or they have the sniffles, or they got in a fight in their marriage, so they didn't come to church. You with me? Yeah. You know how many fights me and my wife have been in over 20 years of having this church, and we still came. Right. That's the thing. That's endurance, church. Yeah. You know how many times yeah. we were sick. You know how many times my wife came sick to church. Amen. You with me? Yeah. Somebody was telling me the other day, I don't know who it was, I, said, I think I was watching a movie, the Alaskan Bush people, and this lady had got a pain and they had to take her from this Alaska and the mountains and all the way to, into town so they could look at her neck and her neck was all jacked up and pain shooting down her neck and this and that. I said, my wife works with that. Oh, she, she preaches with that. Yeah. She don't quit. She don't not come to church and say, honey, I'm not going to go tonight, please. Uh, I want to stay home and rest and this and that. She comes over here when she's sick. She comes over here when she has fever, when her back's out. When, yeah. when, when, yeah. when, come on now. Yeah. Yeah. That's endurance. That's enduring to the yeah. end. That's no matter what. It comes your way. You don't let it get in your way. And, and, and the thing is, is that we... We have become, and when I say we, I mean the body of Christ, yeah. all the other churches included. We have become, you know what I mean, a, 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 a church of excuses. Yeah. A church that says, you know what, I, I, you know, I, I just, please have me excused. The Bible talks about that story. Wow. Where a banquet was thrown, like the like the kingdom of God and, and the, the marriage supper of the Lamb, the banquet, the end time banquet, a picture is right there of that banquet uh, that Jesus is going to have for us in heaven, the marriage supper of the Lamb, and He's having it, and He invited many people to come, and you know who it was? It was His people. It was His church that said, you know what? Well, see what happened was, uh, you know, I I, I got married. And, you know, please have me excused. Yeah. Mm. Amen. I like me and my wife got married too. And we've been running for Jesus for 30 years. Yeah. Running hardcore for him. Not on Sunday mornings. Yeah. Every day for Jesus. Every Bible study. Every outreach. Everything we can do. We've been running hard for 30 years. You with me? But somehow God renews our strength. Yeah. We got cricks and... And, and aches and slips and drips and erratic shifts, <laughs> just like you do too. Yeah, but we keep running though. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. We're in the race. We're in a fight here. We don't get, you know what, coach, I'm sorry, I need to sit out. You know, like some of our kids, I've never seen our kids yeah. playing, and I, I, I think I need, I need to coach, I need to come out for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Shut up and get in there and play. You're our best player. I, I need a drink. I need, I need to go sit down for a, take a break. Just put somebody else in. Hmm? Yeah. 
Who else are you going to put in? We're running, we're playing, you know what I mean? The NFL players, NBA players, Kobe Bryant, all these guys, you see what they've done in their careers. They didn't say, you know what, Coach, I think I want to break. No, 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 they're mad because they want to be in there because they know if I'm in there, we're going to win. Yeah. If I'm in there, I'm going to play my heart out. I'm going to, you know what I mean, I'm going to do my best so that we can win. And they, they, they get broken legs, they get twisted ankles, they get, uh, 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 what do you call them when they hit your head? Uh, uh, concussions, you know what I mean? They get all this stuff, but they still want to be in there. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. They don't want to quit, they don't want to sit out. Why? Because they're, they're, they're players, they're, they're real players, not the ones you guys know. Because right. hmm? they got, they know their gift, they know their purpose. You with me? They don't ask to be put on the side and sit out. They go and they keep going and they don't quit until maybe an injury or something like that. Us, we get injuries, we got to keep fighting. Us people injure us all the time. People offend us all. You say, why did I, why'd you stop going? To, well, somebody said something and offended me and made me mad, so I stopped going to church. Ain't that like a little brat? Yeah. Spoiled little brat. Got offended, got hurt, so you stood away from church. Boo-hoo. Yeah, Sounds like a spoiled brat that needs a spanking to me. And there's a lot of adults that need a good whipping. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. By the Lord, but because the Lord dis will discipline you. Yeah. Especially if you're His. If you ain't His, He don't care. You know what He said? He said, if you don't let me discipline you in this and that King James, you're bastards. Yeah. Hmm? That's not my, that's not bad word, it's in the Bible. Yeah. But the Lord called him. He says, if you're not, if you go to church and say all this, don't let me teach you, don't let me discipline you. And when you need a spank and I can't spank you, you're a bastard and you're not my child. He says, I know my own. And listen, our own, we don't beat them because we just ain't got nothing else to do and we want to hit them. You, you spank them, you discipline them when they're out of control, when they're out of order, when they're breaking your commands and your laws. God don't beat his kids just because he ain't got nothing to do. You with me? Yeah. He disciplines those he loves. Right. And if he loves you, he's going to discipline. If he don't love you, I don't know what that says about you. Yeah, yeah. You with me? Yeah. He said, they that endure, they that go through hell, and don't stop going, don't stop serving. Keep going, man. Even whenever you and your own family comes against you, yeah. that's the hardest part of serving God. It's not somebody at church giving you a dirty look or you don't get along with. It's your own family when they look at you and say, man, we can't stand you anymore. Right. Miss Hallelujah, Miss Holy Roller, yeah. all of us, uh, man, I don't want nothing. Don't invite her over there. Yeah. Yeah. We don't want her over there preaching to everybody. Yeah. 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 Then she go and ruin everybody's buzz. Yeah. <laughs> come on. Huh? Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. Ain't nothing like somebody sitting next to you full of the Holy Ghost. You're all jacked up. you like, I gotta go. <laughs> this is convicting me, man. And you and you and, and you feel like, gee, do I smell or what, well, man? No, it's the Holy Spirit in you. They don't want it. They don't like it. They hate conviction. They think you're judging them, and they run away from you, walk away from you, or maybe even your face tell you they hate you. I remember my sister would preach to me and tell me about the Lord and this and that and I remember we would go skating when we were kids man and here she come man because you know I mean she had she liked to skate and she liked to exercise and stuff so there she come Friday nights man we'd be all buzz we'd be high we'd be skating checking out the babes you know I was like Vincent I'm like oh dear Jesus kill my buzz why don't you <laughs> She didn't really preach to me. She didn't really say it. Just her. Couldn't stand her. Because she was full of the Holy Ghost. And I was full of the Diablo. You with me? And I didn't want nothing to do with her. I didn't want nothing to do with God. I wanted to do my own thing. I wanted to have my cake and eat it too. Have my baby mama and, and play the field too. Come on now. You with me? And my sister would come, I'm praying for you, you know, you know, you want to go to church or this, oh, I hated that girl so much. But you know who prayed me through, man? When my grandma died, you know who was there to pray me through? It wasn't anybody else but, but my sister. Yeah. My sister would pray for me. 
Yeah. You with me? She would, she would tell me, you know what I mean? She would put the Latinos on for me. What will you do when the party's over? What you gonna do when Jesus comes back and takes his church away? Are you gonna be ready on that day? Playing with the oldies theme, man. Yeah. Do, 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 do. You know what I mean? And I like that. I say, hey, that's cool. But, uh, the, but the, you know, it's just kind of a little deception because the men, they got me in with the music and the oldies, and, but they're ministering the word to my mind and my heart. And I'm like, oh man, that convicted me. But I like the song. What you gonna do when the party's over? When your buzz is killed, when you when when you're facing God face to face, what you gonna do? Who are you gonna call now? Yeah. You with yeah. me? Yeah. Who are you gonna call? Remember remember Selvi? Selvi's dad was the bell bonds. I used to call him when I get in trouble. Sometimes he burned me and leave me in jail for weekends and I, I didn't like that too good, but where is he at? Hi, you went to New Mexico. What? I'm in here. I need to get out. Yeah, you went to New Mexico because I thought everybody revolved around me. Yeah, right. That's how selfish I was. I know none of you have ever been like that. Yeah. But that's what I thought. The world revolved around me. Yeah. My problems, everybody stop and, and focus on me. It's not like that. That's not the real world. Right. You with me? Yeah. Amen. Amen. But I hated my sister for preaching me the gospel. And they're going to hate you too for the spirit of God that's on the inside of you. And maybe your own husband that hates your guts. Hates you because you're a Christian. It's all right. I tell them I still love you, man. And that door's right there, man. And I didn't bolt it, nail it shut or anything, honey. I love you. The Bible says that if I'm serving the Lord and you wish to stay, that I'm to keep you. But at any time you want to walk out that door, I'm free from you. Hallelujah. Que te vaya bien. Adios. Bon voyage. Kick rocks, whatever it is. I'm going to serve the Lord. You with me? Because I made my mind up. I'm enduring to the very end. I didn't start this to quit today. I didn't start this to quit. You guys don't even know many times where, you know what I mean, I feel like, man, you know what I mean, especially with, you know, people that have left our church, people that have been here, people that have burned us or hurt us, yeah. or people that just don't listen, in other words, we say. Yeah. You think they're listening, they don't listen. Yeah. You with me? Because they're too busy with their own lives. Amen. They're too busy. You with me? Right. They, got, they, got, they got so many excuses, it's not even funny too busy, want to do their own thing, want to go their own way, want to come when it's convenient or, or this and that. You can't serve God like that. You can't serve. You want to play religion, go to St. Leander's. You want to, you, you want to mess around, go to one of these churches around here that ain't serving the Lord. But you can't do that in the kingdom of God. This ain't about you, you know, you know uh, at your convenience. They, they told Jesus, I want to follow you, Jesus, and be your disciple. He said, foxes have wolves, birds of the air have nests. But the Son of Man don't even have a place to stay. Yeah. You sure you want to come with me? Yeah, that's right. Okay. Count the cost, baby. Count the cost. Hmm? Because there was nights where me and my wife had nowhere to go. As pastors, we had to stay in, in the church. There was times, I, mean, I see these guys out here holding the signs. I see them asking for money. And, and, and it breaks my heart when they say, man, you know what? Me and my lady need a place to stay. And it's only, I just only need 10 more dollars and this and that. I know exactly what they're feeling, but I didn't do what they did. I prayed and asked God, God, anoint my hands and bless me. And I went out and I found a job. And every night for, I don't know, two weeks, I think it was, that me and my wife were paying for a Super 8. You go ask that Indian dude that runs it. Every night we would come over there and we would hand him $40 so that me and my family had a night, had a place to shower and spend the night. Come on somebody. You think you're the only one that's lived out on the streets with nowhere to go? But see the difference was is that I had God on my side. And I wasn't, I wasn't asking the world for help. I was praying and asking God for help. And we would go and we would have to find $40 a night. Until I, I asked my landlord where I had my church, do you think we could stay in this little tiny room like this? Me and five kids and my wife. With one of those old heaters. Remember the, the, the abuelitas would put their pan of water and... and Remember them all play, them they had one of those in the corner and, and, and us on our on the floor sleeping there because we had nowhere else to go. 
Come on now, this ain't about, you know, living a rich life and doing all this. See, that's the things that people don't see about us now. Yeah. They look at us now and they say, oh, wow, look at their house. Look at the car they drive, or look at, look at, look, you know, Pastor, look, he, he got a suit, look at his watch. I bet you that thing's worth three, four hundred dollars, and this, no, somebody bought me that. You with me? Yeah. The, that big old rock on there? And that guy got that at Ross, bro, for seven bucks. <laughs> hmm? I'm not ashamed to say it. You with me? Huh? And we know what it is to, to endure. We know what it is to put up with. We know what it is. Come on now. Yeah. You've got family members that drive you nuts, but the Bible commands you to love them right. and put up with their nonsense because somebody put up with you when you were an addict, when you were all lost, when you were all jacked up, when you were running the streets, when you were doing all that. Your mom and the dad and everybody put up with you. All of a sudden, we become Christians and we want to cut people off. You know what I mean? That need our help. Yeah. You with me? Because yeah. we're not going to put up with that. We talked to somebody. Oh, no. I don't know who was with us. We went to a car show the other day. And some of the people used to come to our church. We told them, man. We told them. And they, they came. God restored their relationship. They had been divorced and all this different. No, I don't even know if they were ever to marry. But when they came to our church, he came first and got saved. And then he brought his kids with him. And they started growing up. And then one day, their wife, that the mom came into the picture. And these were felons that got custody of the children back. The mom came back into the picture and, 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 and started coming to the church. And this brother, man, he wanted a woman, you know. And I said, there you go. There's your old lady. No, no, no. And I said, we're, we're going to pray about it. And eventually, God put that love back together and put them back together. And I married them, man. They got pictures to prove it. And God set that family in order, and God saved them, and they had their house and everything, but they started messing up. They started slipping, missing church, missing prayer. And I said, listen, God, you, you guys, you can't do that. This ain't like the way God did in your life. It ain't like some people just attending some nice, pretty church somewhere. God brought you from, you, were, you, you know what I mean, prison and all this stuff. And I said, listen, if you, don't, if you don't get it right, you know, everything that God did in your life in two years, God, the devil would take away in two minutes. And it wasn't, two, it wasn't, it wasn't a few uh, months after that, he had gotten arrested for accused of child molestation. She got, went to Denver, stabbed a woman in the neck, got sent to prison, uh, prison for attempted murder, all this different stuff, you know what I mean? And, and it's like their life was all a mess. And now the two kids that were with them are now 16 or 17, 18, 19 years old. And, 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 and the older one is doing okay, but the younger one, you know what I mean, is in, a, is in a youth prison now, hates God, hates everybody, out of control, and this and that. And the mom says, we seen the mom this weekend, and the mom says, well, you know what, I got myself together. She needs to get her life in order. My wife said, wait a minute, you were the one that jacked her up. Yeah. You were the one that left her. You were the one that went to the joint and went and doing your dope and all this stuff and jacked them kids up and got them sent to a foster home. And now when she needs you the most, she needs to get her own self together. I said, my, have we, have we lost yeah, perspective on, on what God did. In the, in the, I'm not going to church, she said. I'm not doing that. I'm just doing my low writing. That's right. Good. She said, you can't make it without God. Uh, well, I don't do nothing. I don't do drugs. I don't do this and this. About you still ain't gonna make it. You can have the baddest low rider in the world and go cruising on Saturday nights and show it on Sundays at shows and do all this. But without Jesus, you're gonna go to hell. You're gonna end up in hell. You with me? And I didn't even have to say. My wife, I, I walked away. My wife did preaching to her, and she told her a thing or two. You with me? Because yeah. we have a tendency to forget where we come from. Yeah. Yeah. To forget who helped us out and what when we were going to prison and when this happened and we stabbed so and so on this, we forget what God has done for our lives. And we think we, the devil makes you think it was you that got yeah. yourself out of trouble. We forget that the Lord is the one. He said, they that endure to the very end, the same shall be saved. Don't forget what God has done for you. Don't forget who brought you out. Amen? Amen.
Let me finish this scripture. He says, but the, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. And the, gospel, and the good news about the kingdom will be preached throughout the whole world so that all nations will, will hear it and the end, and then the end will come. Right. Matthew 24, uh, 10 through 14. Amen. 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 Also another scripture, 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse number 1. If you want to turn there real quick. 1 Timothy 4, 1. We're talking about the last days, church. How many know God's not looking for perfect people? Right. He's looking for people that will allow Him to let them, let Him change them. Right. We, we, none of us are perfect. Right. Every one of us are flawed and jacked right. up from our past and everything right. else. And, and yet, yet the Lord works with us. Right. Yet the Lord helps us. You with me? I don't care who it is. I don't care who it is you look on TV. You see, you know, this and that, and they got at the biggest church in America, and this, I don't care who it is, baby. Everybody's flawed. And everybody needs Jesus. Even if you're serving him, you still need him. So I tell people, I don't come to church because I got my life all together. I come to church because I still need Jesus. Come on now. You with me? Amen. I, I always, I, I heard a pastor say, you know why God made me a pastor? And, and you know, we were in the service and we we're like, why? And he said, because so I won't backslide. That's why. Uh, huh? Uh, God put that in our hearts. Amen. He put the, he put the, your, your pastors in your way and, your, and, and the, the word of God there. Why? So you won't backslide. Why do you think we have stuff all the time? We have Sunday morning service. Yeah. We have Sunday night service. Right, we have Sunday night service. Did I say we had Sunday night service? Yeah. We have Sunday night service. We have Monday night prayer, 6 p.m. We have uh, uh, Tuesdays. We, you know, we don't. I don't think we have. We used to have our Bible school yeah. on Tuesday night. On Wednesday nights, we got men's in there, women's in different houses around here. You know what I mean? On Thursday nights, like tonight, we have our service. On Friday night, we have prayer. On Saturdays, we have our Mexican dinners, or we do outreaches, or we do different things on Saturdays. And then again on Sundays, you know what I mean? And you think, gee, that's everything. But how, how often did you use when you use? I, I, I don't know about you, but I wasn't really a drug addict, but I was an alcoholic. And I drank every day. And I woke up to drink. I talked to one of the brothers that comes here sometimes, Victor. He come over here the other day. He said, man, I need to go to the home. And he was wasted. He got food. I said, bro, I ain't got, I, wait a minute. I got my Danishes on my desk. And I was like, and I was kind of thinking, well, should I, Lord? Or, no, because you know, I come every morning. And, 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 <laughs> and but he said, man, Pastor, I'm hungry. I said, you know what, hold on. And I went and grabbed him the whole thing. I should have put me a few to the side, but I didn't. Gave him the whole thing, man. And he says, Pastor, I'm, I'm jacked up. He's got cracks in his face and his arms are broken broken and he fallen in season and everything else and I said Victor you're gonna die bro you need to go to our men's rehab I, I'm gonna go I'm gonna go when when they go and I said well we got a lady going up to Denver first of the month man you, you know he's never around for the first of the month because he gets paid on the first of the month you know what I mean but he says you know what the first thing I think about he goes uh, man is a beer I need one he says I need one. I remember partying. You know what I mean? And one time this one girl that I was partying with in the morning, you know, we party all night and woke up in the morning and, and, the, and the, the little leftovers, just the little sips of cervezas that were around. I remember her, man, shaking. And I remember her going and getting every one of those and making enough for a, a glass of beer because she was so addicted to the alcohol. She was shaking and she would drink them vavas and everything else. And I was, I was like, oh, man, that's gross. But that's, that's what, that's a life. Every day. I remember partying all night long with my father-in-law. And I remember waiting at the White Horse when it was on this side of the 4th Street. I remember waiting there to get, to, for it to open up at, I don't know, 6 or 7 in the morning. So that we can, we, we, were, we didn't stop. We kept, we kept the party right on move. Huh? We didn't say, well, wait a minute, it's, you know, it's Sunday night at 6, you know, I need to, I need to go home because I got work. <laughs> work? We didn't work? We didn't want to work, we wanted to play. We didn't have time for work. 
I remember working at Popeyes too for about two weeks. And that was a, you know what I mean? I don't want to make chicken, dude. Yeah. Throw your chicken, don't splash yourself because you're going to burn. Make sure you bread it, right? I have no time for this. I'm going to go party. I'm going to go to just plaz and pump out some blood or some plaz so I can get me. I'll yeah. buy a dime bag, bro. Yeah. You get the yeah. case of, yeah. you get the, I mean, we, we, that's how we live every day. Yeah. Not on Sunday. Yeah. We didn't just go Sunday night to the, the library, man, after the city park. Yeah. Every night we were looking for ladies' night, men's night, yeah. quarter pictures. I don't care what it was, we were there. All decked out, ready to go, all smelling good. We can go party tonight. You know, no, it's Tuesday, bro. Now yeah. Tuesday was a reason to go party. Yeah. Ain't nothing else to do on Tuesday. Let's yeah. go. Yeah. Every day we party, yeah. and then we get saved, and we want this. We want this pastor. Watch, I'll show you to tickle our ears and tell us it's okay. Just live your lives, and if you get a chance, come on Sunday. Come on, bring your family down. It'd be nice. We'll put programs for the kids, and and, and we'll swimming pool, and we'll put the recliner so you can lay back, so you know you can rest, and a drink holder there for your coffee or macchiatas and caramel macchiatas, and you know what I mean, whatever. You know, where your wife beaters and your little Daisy Dukes, and your and, and, and just come, man, just come, and you know at your convenience. Hmm? And you know what? We'll see you. We'll see you next Sunday. God bless you. And when next Sunday I'm backslidden. Uh, By Monday or Tuesday I'm backslidden. Uh, Come on now, you can tell a junkie. You know what I mean? We'll see you next Sunday. God bless you. We'll be praying for you. Yeah. You look when they had already broken your car, took your stereo and everything. Talking about next Sunday. I need something now. I need the Lord now. I need to anoint me with oil. Lay me out. Pray in the spirit over me. Let me sing more songs and let me run around until I get it in my spirit. That I'm saved to the bone. That he's changed me. That I'm not the same person anymore. You don't need preachers telling you. We'll see you next Sunday. God bless you. You know what I mean? Here's a few bucks. Hey, uh, I had one of my friends. I'm not going to even tell you what city, what direction, man. But one of the guys was a con, con man. He was a drug addict. So, man, he was over there. He had the pastor, man. You know what I mean? He was still in the pastor's uh, uh, jewelry. Uh, uh, and listen, it got so bad that I think he even had the pastor's wife. But I do know that he had, he had jumped the pastor one night and in the mask and jumped him and took all his jewelry, his wallet, his money, and everything else. And then the, and then the next day had the pastor taking him to the connection house, taking me to my friends right over here, and he was buying drugs and taking it and going back to the pastor's house. And I've seen it with my own eyes. Pastor's wife was an older woman, and she was very attractive, man. But she's all, you know, honey, where can I get you to eat? Can I make you something? What do you want tonight? And he's like, well, tonight I think I want some, some ribs and mashed potatoes. And she was, you know what I mean? And I seen some, I'm like, oh, dear Jesus, don't, 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 don't. Don't, don't don't let this be true, Lord God. And and then say, yeah, she does this to me all the time. The other night she made this and, and she treats me like a kid. I said, Where's your husband? Where's the pastor at? Come on, somebody did that with my wife. We'd be boxing. I mean, make your own dang ribs and you go cook for us, kid. My wife ain't serving you, bro. Uh, amen. And then this guy had him going, had to even rob the church for all the, the, uh, the stuff, stole everything from the church. And then he would go the next day and tell the pastor, take me to, over here to pay this guy. And he'd be getting drugs. I said, man, these are the kind of pastors that are out there. Have no idea what in the world they're doing or who's in their congregation. Come on now. You can't con a con. Huh? That's why God's raising up last time decatos and drug addicts, I mean, winos and prison. They come out all tired. Orale, we're going to preach. You're scared. You're like, okay, Pastor, preach it. Huh? Amen. You don't need this. Watch in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. It says, Now the Holy Spirit tells us clearly that in the last times, some will turn away from the true 
true faith. They will follow deceptive spirits and teachings that come from demons. Wow. You would think that you go to churches or you go places or even, especially you got to watch, you got to watch this. You got to watch the little side Bible studies and yeah. stuff. Yeah. You got to watch things like that. Because usually things like that are, you know what I mean? You got to be very careful. Yeah. You with me? Yeah, yeah. Oh, we're just doing our own Bible study and this and that. Man, I've heard stuff happen and stuff like that. And it's crazy. Unless it's coming through the pastors of that ministry and stuff like that, you don't want to have anything to do with that. Because they're teaching stuff that their pastor wouldn't teach. Right. You with me? Yeah. Or maybe he would. Yeah. De doctrines of devils, man. Teachings that come from demons. You right. with me? Yeah. About God, Mother God? Right. Have you guys heard of that? Yeah. Yeah. The Mother God Church. I thought, well, how blasphemous can you get these days? And you know that they're getting gang members and everybody else saved in their church and baptized? One of my son's friends said, yeah, I went to this church and was baptized and this and that. I said, you tell him, stay away from there. Wow. Doctrines of devils, demons are teaching this, that this woman from, from Asia is God and, and you're to worship her and all this stuff and the people are eating it up like hotcakes. I'm like, man, I'm over here trying to preach the truth and everybody's leaving. Uh -huh. <laughs> huh? Why? End times church. Yeah. Last days church. People would rather listen and have their ears tickled by all this other stuff and, and feel good and you know what I mean? And yeah. it just feels like the right thing. I don't care. You know what I mean? So does a good massage from somebody who's got different interests in you. Yeah. But it doesn't mean it's good. Right. Yeah. Hmm? Right. Somebody said one time, I like all the religions because they all got good points. And I said, yes, I said, that's true. I said, but so does a porcupine. Mm -hmm. And if you get too close to him, he's going to poke you. He's going to yeah. hurt you. Yeah. Yeah. There's just enough truth in some of these things to deceive nations, not just a couple people, a whole nation. That mother God thing has spread from Denver to Springs to Pueblo, probably all these little cities like wildfire. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. Yeah. And, and people are accepting it. And then you know what it is? A doctrine of the devil. You with me? Oh, be patient with this. No, 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 man. You tell the devil straight up. Jesus told the people. He didn't tell the prostitute or the wine or anything. He told the religious people that were claiming they knew the truth. You, you serpents. You, you, you vipers. You, you, you're gonna burn it. You're making them more of a son of hell than you are. He told them. Yeah. Jesus would preach like that. That's not my Jesus. He wouldn't talk like that. Oh, then you don't. You wouldn't like him either. Huh? He'd tear you up. <laughs> huh? Yeah. But these people were, were, were are, are, you know, in this last days, they want to hear all kinds of trash. Amen? Yeah. Let me close with this one here. It's in Revelation chapter 3. And he's talking to the church of Leo, uh, Laodicea. He says, write this letter. Uh, it's in uh, Revelation 3. I think it's, I don't know where it is. I'm not going to go to the bottom, but it says this. Write this letter to the angel of the church in Laodicea. This is the message from the one who is the amen, the, the, the faithful and the true witness, that the beginning of, of God, of God's new creation. Amen? amen? The beginning or the firstborn of God's new creation. I know all the things that you do, that you are neither hot nor cold. He says, I wish that you were one of the one or the other. He says, but since you are, luke, are like lukewarm water, neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. You say, now this is their thinking, watch. I am rich. In other words, I'm blessed. He says, I have, I have everything I want. But not everything you want is, is God. Because the devil will give you everything you want. He says, I have everything I want. I don't need a thing. And you don't realize that you are wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. 
So I advise you to buy gold from me, gold that has been purified by fire. And we know in First Peter he's talking about our faith is, is, is pure gold purified by fire. He said, then you will be rich. Then you'll be rich. Also buy white garments from me so that you will not be shamed by your nakedness. White garments, you know, remember the old blood songs? Are you washed in the blood and the, and the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? Is your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? He's saying, you know what? He's not telling you go purchase because you can't buy that with money. He's saying, man, come to me. Let me wash you in the blood of Jesus. Let, let me make your garments white as, white as snow. Not all spotted like a, like a hyena. Hmm? Right. Fine, pure. You see a beautiful bride coming down, man, on her wedding day. She ain't got it from the. She didn't get her dress from the ark. Yeah. An old '60s dress that they patched up and dry, dry cleaned, and yet it's all yellow and spotted and stuff. But you know, she was satisfied with that. Oh no, them them bridezillas want it. <laughs> they want to look. They want to have the whole show. Yeah. They want to be beautiful and like a princess and all that in white. That's what God wants from his church yeah. too. He don't want us all jacked up. Amen. 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 He said, and buy white garments from me so that you will be, you won't be, or you will not be shamed by your nakedness. And we know the world's, what is it? They always want to get you naked, right? Yeah. Amen. That's, that's the devil's goal, get you naked. God's is to clothe you. God's to put a beautiful garment on you, an awesome set of clothes on you, some beautiful shoes. The devil wants to strip you of all that stuff and make you shameful in God's eyes. Amen. 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 He said also by, uh, I already read that, uh, shameful in your nakedness. He says an, an ointment for your eyes so that you will be able to see correct and, di and dis discipline. Every, oh, he says, and see, the USC correct and dis, I correct, I'm sorry, and discipline everyone I love. So be diligent and turn from your indifference. Indifference means you're neither for something nor against something. You're just que sera, sera, whatever will be, will be. The future's ours to see. Right? Yeah. Just, if I go to church, I go to church. If I don't, God knows. Yeah. You with me? That's the heartbeat of the church today. It don't matter. He says he doesn't want you indifferent. He says, look, I stand at the door and knock. At the door of what? The door of your heart. He says, if you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in. And we will share a meal together as friends. Those who are victorious will sit with me on my throne, just as I was victorious and sat down with, with my father on his throne. Amen? He, remember, he said, those who are victorious, that means you're going to have to fight. You're going to have to win this battle. Amen? And if you don't win, you're not going to sit with them. Amen. He says, anyone who hear, who, anyone with ears to hear, uh, must listen to the Spirit and understand what He is saying to who? Your church. You as an individual. Your church. Como que you're the church. You with me? We're all the body of Christ. We all need each other. You're not the church all by yourself. You're just, that's like, me, you know, going to one of these beautiful buildings downtown, you know what I mean, by the county jail and getting, like, and getting one of the bricks and saying, look here, this brick is the, is the building. It's the Presbyterian church across the street. This bit, they look and say, Pastor, you're crazy. That's just a brick. All it was was a part of a church. It's a brick by itself. And we have to understand that we make up the body of Christ. And right. if you're absent, if you're not there, or if you're not plugged in, you're just a brick. Right. You're just a stone. Yeah. 
Yeah. You with me? Yeah. We've got to be plugged in and be a part of what God's doing. And, and you'll hear pastors that will preach against that. You hear pastors say, you know what, it don't matter. You know what I mean? If you come and this and that, but they'll, they'll, they'll make sure they give you that offering envelope. Say, you know what, brother, sister, don't. You know, just make, make sure, you know. Keep it in there. Whether you come or not, whether you're faithful, they won't preach on faithfulness. They won't preach on commitment. You know, we get people even in, come to our church, in our ministry, that get mad, or I'm going to say PO'd, if we ask them anything. Because it's none of your business what I do. Oh, really? Uh, you with me? Then you go pastor yourself. Yeah. Then you pray for yourself, lay hands on yourself, counsel yourself, preach to yourself. You know what I mean? You expect from yourself. You know what I mean? And, 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 and when you need something, then you call yourself. Yeah. Look in the mirror and say, what do I do now? Yeah. Hmm? You with me? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. But it's like, you know what, we're, we're apart. And I'm not saying this because, you know, anything that, that I'm trying to tell you tonight to come to church and this and that, but, but it's, it's what His Word says. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. I'm talking about people who are living this K sera sera life that, 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 that they don't realize your pastor needs you. I tell these men all the time. You think they listen? You with me? That's like you as a woman telling your husband, honey, I need you just to, you know, not for, you know, what you think. I just need you to hold me. I just need you to, to, to provide for me. I just need you to care for me. I just need you to, re, re, to protect me. I just, and they like, you know what I mean? And they say, oh, uh -huh, uh -huh. can we get to the other thing now? Yeah. And you're like, that's all you want is the other thing. I need more than that. You with me? Yeah. And they, but they don't hear nothing, uh huh, yeah. uh huh. Because <laughs> you know where they're going. That's all they think about. And 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 it's the same thing with people in church. Yeah. When they need something, oh, pastor, you better be there. Yeah. You, you you, I need you over here now. Yeah. Yeah. Where are you at? You know. <laughs> But you can't ask the same, and the thing is that we're supposed to be able to. That's right. You with me? Yeah. We're supposed to be able. You're supposed to be able to get yeah. that from your husband. Are, are you with me? Yeah. When you have needs and stuff like that, you, you know what I mean? Same yeah. thing. Pastor, sometimes, man, we go through hard times. That enemy attacks us all the time. He attacks me all the time. Yeah. Who, who do I ask for help? Who do I, who do I, when they don't even show up? Yeah. You with me? I don't, I don't know where I'm supposed to go. I guess to the Lord, just me and Him, and that's what I have to do. That's what I told you. If we have the Holy Spirit and the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, that's a, you know, nice. That's four, two or three. We're, we're, we're better than, you know what I mean? At least we're winning there. And yeah, we need the Lord, and that's all we need. But we also need fellowship, and we need koinonia. We need people around our lives, and you need people too. Yeah. You need your pastors. You need your church. And we need you. My wife needs you. She don't need you to argue with her. Every little thing, come against her, get offended, get hurt, leave the church, and all this. She don't need that. We've gotten that for years and years. You know what I mean? And sometimes you just get used to it. And people wonder, well, why is she, she looks like she's hard and she don't, you know, like you let me in and this and that. Because a lot of people have been in and have stabbed her in the back. Yeah. And sometimes you get, as in the ministry, you learn how to protect yourself from individuals who've hurt you. Amen. That's just the way it is, just like you do. Yeah. Amen. And you can justify you doing that, but you can't justify it. But in ministry, we minister to millions of people, man. Thousands of people. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. And, 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 and yet, in all that, you know what I mean? It's like, man, you know, we're, we're, ser we're serving the Lord. We're, we're after God. And that's all we can do, church. That's all we can do as pastors is... Is, is show you by example and do our best and love the Lord and endure to the end. We can't make you serve God. We can't make you come. We can, come on now. We can't do it. We can encourage you. We can tell you. We can warn you. We can exhort you. But we can't make you serve the Lord. It's your decision. And, and, and if you get to the end over there, you can never look back and say it was those bastards. It was you. You're the one that has to fight this fight. You're the one that needs to endure. You with me? 
and, and, and and so we, we can't be listening to these last days doctrines and all yeah, this stuff. You need to get back to the Bible and reading this and keeping it close to you. This way when anybody tells you a lie, you say, are you a lying devil? I know my word. You don't come up to me with no mother God or tell me about Joseph Smith or, 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 or anybody else. The, de the devil is a liar. The word of God is true. Let every man be a liar and let the word be true. Let my God be true. You with me? I'm going to follow this word and his Holy Spirit's going to lead me and I'm going to make it to the end. I'm going to make it to them golden gates. Come on, I'm not talking about San Francisco either. I'm going to fight and I'm going to run and I'm going to endure to the end. I might be walking sometimes, sometimes I might be running, other times I might be mounted up as eagles wind. Yeah. But, but you know what I mean? But I'm going to keep moving. That's one thing I don't stop is keep moving. Because the moment you stop, you're backsliding. Yeah. Hmm? And you don't, you want to go anywhere but backwards. Stand with me tonight. Last.